Trip Squadron on Thursday. Why am I feeling very chipper today? Uh, it's been a very good Thursday. It's been very productive. Had another chat with a client. Things are going well there as we get closer towards when we're going to start with them. Um, did another two, no, three pages of the super course. And I then thought, ah, you know what? Why don't we jump into recording some videos? So I got six videos recorded, edited, cover art done, and I've just uploaded them. And now all I've got to do is just schedule when they're going to go out. Those videos I was planning to record on Saturday. I'm feeling pretty good and happy now because that kind of means I can maybe do some other stuff on Saturday, maybe some other videos and stuff. So... It's always great. Hey, Emran, how are you doing? It's always great when you're slightly ahead of schedule in terms of what I call video production. You might think that that's all I do. No, we've got, we got website work. We've got clients. There's meetings. But luckily today there was no meetings. Um, well, other than one quick check with a client uh, job that's coming up. Hey, Mia, hope you're all right. Hey, Mike. Um, don't forget to hit like if you're not hit like already. And I can see you guys are already quick to hit like, which is what I love to see. Um, so when, you, when you're ahead of schedule, it's fantastic. So these videos, getting them done, recorded, and now I'm just going to start scheduling when they uh, actually go out. It's an amazing feeling. And to get that all done before I hit the live chat, and that's why I'm starting early, because I thought, oh, I might as well just go early now. Let's just go early. I thought, hey, Raptor X, how are you? So things are going really, really well. Um, it's What I love, though, is um, one of our clients is actually a web design agency in London. And they are very good at what they do. And people know them as well in, you know, the London area and UK area. Hey, Jean. And they've reached out to us to help them out. So we're going to help them out with one of their... It's actually, we're helping them out with their website not a client's website. It's actually their website. Hey, Michael. So they want to do something on top of what they already do. And they want me to help them do that. Two reasons. Number one, it's because it means that they get someone independent doing it. And number two, because what they want to do, I've got more experience of doing that. So it works for both parties. Hey, Henstra, um, Elemental Pro 3.2. I only have three. How do I get 3.2? What you got to do, Henstra, is you got to go to WordPress, Elementor. Then you got to go to Tools. And then inside Tools, go to Version Control. In the Version Control bit, where it says what version do you want, at the bottom it says Beta Testing. You should only do that on a staging or a test website. Once you've enabled that, go back to WordPress, click updates, and you'll get two updates for free and pro, 3.12 beta. It's really, you got this is the important bit, it's beta. Then you upgrade, update to that, and then you can use it. But you have to be make sure it's not a live production site because it could mess things up, all right? Hey, Carlo, how are you doing? Hey, Charlie, how are you? Talk, Angus. Hey, Gail, how are you doing as well? Um, Emran, I have a question for you. Can you suggest a free security plugin, uh, all-in-one security and firewall? Um, to be honest, though, what you got to think about, yeah, is this. So people ask this question a lot. I need the best security plugin, but they don't want to pay millions and millions of pounds, right? You could have... Look at Premier League footballers in the UK. They've probably got pretty good security systems set up, but they still get burgled. So I am not going to recommend any system that is going to be purely amazing and brilliant. But all-in-one security firewall, uh, all-in-one security and firewall plugin is pretty good. WordFence is good. If you want something beefier, then you're going to have to go and get a really hardcore private hosting server, whatever, with hardcore security building. But if you're just going for a couple of free options, uh, then you maybe want to consider all-in-one security uh, and firewall plugin. Hey, Mark, hope you're all right. 
So yeah, today's been really, really good. Good productive day. Double check something with a client whose job hopefully will start soon once they sort out their copywriting, which they're going to do on the train tomorrow. Uh, three extra pages done on the super course, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I can tell you now, each page takes me about one hour, sometimes over one hour. So that just gives you an idea. Three pages done. So that was my morning Six videos recorded, edited, cover arted, uploaded, scheduled, I just have to do. And we're kind of good to go. Michael suggests uh, Shield Pro is a good security plugin. Does security plugin impact on page speed? Unfortunately, anything that is utilizing JavaScript, somewhere or the other, is going to hit your score a little bit. So what you've got to do is... Build your website, check your score. Make sure your score is as high as you can make it. Then when you add Google Tag Manager, if you don't do it to the footer, it hits your score, check your score. If you're going to do a cookie thing, check your score. If you're going to do Facebook Pixel, check your score. If you're going to put in a security plugin, check your score. Always, always, always check your score after you add in an extra component. Because there's nothing worse than you building out your website and you go, why am I getting 20%? Oh, it's the font. You do it and it goes up to 21%. You go, oh, that's weird. Oh, it's my images. You sort out your images. Hang on, I'm still 25%. What's going on? It's not going up high enough. And then you go, aha, it's because I used an inner section. You take the inner section out, you do something different. And you go, oh, it's only 26%. It's because... And I have this problem so many times when I work with people who want to improve their score. It's like trying to pinpoint the exact point of what point you drop down is really difficult when you do it retrospectively. It's like someone building an entire house, right? And then you sort of go, we think there's a problem somewhere in the house. We think that, I don't know, oh God, how, what do we think about it? This is a really bad example now, right? This is a really bad example. There's a grenade. Somehow, one of our people in here dropped a grenade when we were building your house. And you go, well, where's the grenade? They go, we don't know. What are you going to do? Take the entire house apart to find the grenade. Which is why I keep going on and on and on about checking your page speed as you build step by step by step by step. Hey, Maddie, hope you're okay. I'm really glad, Carlo, it works. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that because I don't believe in it, but I, I'm really glad because what I often hear about is those people that say it doesn't do as well as they thought. It's for the exact thing I'm t I've just discussed, which was you're trying to improve something that's fully built out, fleshed out. Now you're you're just plastering on top. You're just fudging. Um and unless you get right down to the root cause of what's causing the problem, or you found it as soon as it happened, you're, you're kind of up against it, you know. Uh, Gene, starting a membership site this week, decided to use Elemental as you feel more comfortable. Why not? Go for it. Yeah, if you're comfortable, go for it. Should I use Flexbox, even though it's in beta? Okay, Gene. Um, for some of our new clients... We've, I've built straight into Flexbox container uh, and everything was okay until I had the issue uh, two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago we had an issue where the, um, the loop grid and the forms, well, the loop grid affected a form, but then Elemental fixed it. So now it's fine. So I would say, Gene, you got to weigh it up on, well, you've got to test it, right? Build it out and test it. Are you doing anything fantastical, amazing with this membership site? If it is a basic membership site, you might be okay. Um, I personally, for every future site we build with Elementor, go straight into Flexbox Container. I do feel like building in section and columns it just feels outdated now. Once you're really in tune with Flexbox Container, working on any website that is section column, it feels like you've just gone backwards, like massively. 
you know. It's like um, in the mid-90s, we used to use Lotus 1, 2, 3. And then Microsoft Excel evolved, right? And everyone was using Excel. By the time I started my first, uh, not my first job, but my first job in the council, we were using Microsoft Excel. Lotus 1, 2, 3 felt like yesterday, right? But, and that's the feeling with Flexbox Container. It's like if you, if you use it, and then you end up using section columns, it literally feels like you've gone backwards. Utterly, utterly backwards in the way you think and build. And you feel like you lose functionality, features. Especially if you're doing, um, especially if you're doing um, uh, blog posts. The loop grid, right? So I would definitely say uh, go for it. Hey, Parody, how you doing? Hey, William, hope you're okay. How come the page speed insights is 64 on mobile? Uh, which website? Which website? Are you talking about our website? Because that's currently going through some changes, uh, William. Do you mean our website? Because I'm, I'm I'm jigging things around in the background on that one at the moment. Whose website are you talking about? How come the page speed insights is 64 on mobile? Are you talking about our website, William? Or your website? Whose website are you talking about? Because if it's our website, that's a little bit, you know, like... I'm working on stuff in the background and I'm chopping and taking things in and out, you know. But I've already proven so many times that page speed, you can get really high. So to call me out on my website is a bit, it's neither here or there because we're working on stuff in the background. Um, yeah, well, um, um, yeah, but it's because we're working on stuff in the background, William. So I'm doing some other stuff. So I'm always tinkering with stuff. Our website is not set in stone. There's always stuff I'm either testing or doing differently. And also I'm going to be um, um, expanding it to handle the super course and stuff like that. So, uh, But I'm not worried about that, William. I don't have to prove anything to anyone about it. So if anyone pulls me up on that, I kind of go, whatever, don't care. Hey, Dave. Um, so a point Carlo made about a client loaded 20 images and the score went down. It, it's funny, you see, my brother-in-law contacted me yesterday and I helped him out on his website a year ago. And basically, he said whenever he tries to run a backup, it fails and he's really, really struggling. So late last night, I logged in and I had a look and, I said, and I've said to him, basically... I told you to use bulk resize photos for your website. He sells audio equipment, right? I told you to use that. His media library has now got over a thousand images. All of his images are JPEG. His images are like two and a half thousand pixels wide by like 2000 high because he's taking them on a high quality camera and he's not changing the size, let alone compress. Two and a half thousand pixels by a thousand pixels for little WooCommerce product images. We're talking about WooCommerce product images here. They're like that. And he's got them like that. JPEG, right? Thousand images. How big do you think his website is? How big do you think his website database file is now? Because I've checked it. How big do you think it is? I'll tell you. 10.2 gigabytes. His website is 10.2 gigabytes. He's um, never deleted any images. So when he sold products, he's not gone in and cleaned it up. He's not compressed. He's not done what I told him to do. And it's like, well, you now got to go. I basically told him, sent him a message this morning. You've got to go through and manually delete the images. You manually got to compress. And what was really funny was he then said to me, if I delete the images, will they delete from my homepage? I went, well, yeah, obviously, if you delete the image for your hero banner, <laughs> of course, the hero banner image will disappear. Did I really have to explain that? Um, just check some of the comments coming in. Oh, my son's home. I hope he doesn't make any noise. A uh, parody. Is there a reason you use Elemental over Bricks? Uh, to be absolutely honest, parody, I base it on the client. So if the website's going to be handed over to someone, Elemental is, is far easier, in my opinion, in training up really quick 
bricks a little bit more thinking, easier to break it and go wrong with it because they could easily mess up one of the global styles or the CSS style with a class system and then affect loads and loads of stuff. And it's like, then they might start individually touching stuff and the class system then is out of sync. Elemental is a little bit more like, yeah, you did that, boom, fix, whatever, move on. So I would say it's not, it's sometimes easy to do that. Um, uh, hey, Martin, how you doing? So yeah, basically it's uh, 10.2 gigabytes. Like, you know, like flipping heck. And then they're wondering why whenever they try and do like an updraft backup or even a WP Vivid backup, it crashes. It's literally crashing. And I said to them, if you're doing this on your server, you're filling up big time daily as well. Daily backups, right? And if you're doing it to your Google Cloud, <laughs> your Google Cloud's going to get whacked out as well. But this is what happens with um, people who don't follow the rules about... Um, compressed images, sizing, how big does the image need to be, right? Does it, it doesn't need to be that big for a WooCommerce product image. So how, so William's asking, how long would it take for a website with very little competition uh, to take to rank on average? Well, it, 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 you could put the best keywords in, William, but if no one is searching for that, and clicking to go there, you're not gonna rank very well. So even if you have the best keywords ever, is it a common set of keywords that someone searches for? So let's say, let's just say your website was about um, how to shave King Kong. How to shave King Kong. Is anyone gonna be searching for how to shave King Kong? So number one, you probably have got it very nicheified and no one searches for it. Number two, even if someone does find it, are they going to click it, go to your website and stay for three minutes? If they're not there for three minutes, yes, it gets registered as a click, but it's a weak click. Three minutes or more is a really strong click in the eyes of Google and their algorithm. Yeah, well, it's um, it, uh, it snowed a lot today and it's now just started to melt quite a bit. And my son's home and I can hear him wanting to go in the garden and I've got a feeling he's going to come in here crying because he's probably not allowed. I can hear him shouting now. I, I can literally hear him shouting. <laughs> you probably can as well in a bit. Yeah, Martin, what's the email about? What's the what's the email about, Martin? Uh, so I'm just checking out your email. Uh... Yeah, I mean, what? Are, yeah. Um... Okay, so the question from Ma I'm gonna I'm just gonna go through Martin's question live on air. Okay, while everyone's here, but let me just check the cost uh, other comments coming in, Oscar. I can't drag and scroll down a widget that is a duplicate in the last version of Elemental Pro. Nope, I don't get that issue, Oscar. My question to you would be, though, is have you got any Elemental add-ons or are you got any JavaScript minimizing, aggregating, optimization plugins installed? Uh, would a one-page website be enough to rank? Well, William, again, it doesn't matter if it's a one-page website or a 20-page website. It's the keywords. Will people search for it? Will people click? If people aren't searching for it, they're not clicking on it, it doesn't make any difference if it's a one-page or a 20-page website. Did I make any video on Jet Engine plugin? Nope, Imran, I have not. I've not, have to be honest, found the need to really, really do it at the moment. Um, right, okay, um, right, okay, so Martin's question is, um, he's got a website where the client wants the checkout process to follow the attached. All right, I have to be honest here, Martin, you are stepping into consultancy arena now, because if I start studying this, it's going to take me more than five minutes. Um, and if I'm honest, you might want to go look at like a sales funnel or a uh, 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 funnel cart or cart funnel, <laughs> funnel cart. Go look at cart funnel. 
because you might need to set up like a step-by-step -step process if that's what they want. If I'm really, really honest, though, I don't. I'm, I'll be honest, Martin, I'm not going to spend any more time looking at it because you're that you're now stepping into consultancy arena where really that's a paid service. But what I will say is I think you need to speak to your client because they've got five steps. It's a bit pointless like that, you know, but I would say that I would speak to the client. But Cart Funnel, maybe Cart Funnel might help you out. Premium plugin, it might help you out. Hey, Artif, how are you doing? Uh, by the way, Artif, I've just recorded um, uh, six code snippet videos. I'm now just scheduling them in. They'll be coming out over the next three weeks. Six more videos. Got those done. Parody, best tool to set up portfolio with facets. Uh, I would say Loop Grid Elementor and I would say the WP Grid Builder plugin uh, to maybe do your facets or your searching criteria for that. Mohammed Asworth, how are you doing? How many users can a WordPress website handle at max? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say, though, it's more about your hosting provider and your bandwidth, if I'm honest. I think that's going to matter more. If you're with GoDaddy, it just about handles one. Um, so William is saying 200 people search a month for that keyword. How long should it take for a new website to get to number one? To be honest, William, it could take two days, three days, four days. I got someone's website that was on page 14 to page one, rank number two after seven days with nothing fancy. So if those people are specifically searching, well, no, William, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just break this down, everyone. Steady down now, everyone. If 200 people, okay, William, what is the keyword? William, be brave and tell us the keyword. Put the keyword or the key phrase in the chat because we will do a search for it right now, live on the air. This is a message for William Goddard. Please paste the keyword or the key phrase below. Put it in. Put it in because my answer now is going to depend on what comes up. If you're brave, put the result in, right? And we'll see what it says. We'll see what it says. And by the way, Artie, if you know those code snippet videos, um, it's not until the video is actually live, I then, I then put the video embed code into code snippets because if I put it in now, it won't come up because it's not officially out there yet. Shaving King Kong. <laughs> I don't know why I even thought of that, um, to be honest, Michael. I was like, right, what can I think of that is so nicheified? Yes, how to shave King Kong. Maybe if your name is King Kong, you would actually do that. So, um, Artif, uh, not Artif, sorry, um, uh, William, please tell me what the key word is or the key phrase, because that is very, very important to give you my opinion of how long it would take you to rank for that. So Artib, I was watching your video about Brick's Mega Menu. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you know something, Artib? Yes, it is. What I've done there is still the best way because loads because I think a few days ago there was a conversation about this in um, the Brick's forum about the Mega Menu, about how we don't properly have a proper way yet. And, you know, um, I still think that way is still the best way. In fact, I still think it's the easiest way. Yes, it is fiddly. You've got to drop your button in. You're dropping in your container. You're building out your container. You're dropping the code. Yes, it is a little bit fiddly, a little bit. But at the same time, it's also really easy to do as well. Um, Carlo, do you know if pods can work with comments? Uh, uh, um, I'm trying to think there. So you would have a custom field. So if you built a template for posts, can it work with comments? Can I also activate comments? Um, I suppose. I suppose so. I'm a little bit erming about, because obviously comments you can do, you're going to disable that, allow it as a custom field, I think. So I'm going to say yay, 
but I'm also going to say nay. So I'm going to say you're going to have to try it out. William, you've disappeared. You've asked us questions, William, and now you've completely disappeared on us. Like, where are you gone? Right? William? If anyone is sat next door to William, can you please give him a nudge? William? Uh, where, you know, you're meant to give us the key word and the key phrase. You've piqued our interest. Please don't forget to hit like if you've not hit like already. You've piqued our interest. I want to know the key word now. Uh, parody, is there a free or more affordable alternative to Grid Builder? Um... I'm not sure. I'm, you know, Jet Smart Filter, maybe. But I don't know how good that is. Right, so yours is gutter cleaning in Southampton. Right, everyone. So now we're going to do this live on air, okay? This is live on air. So I'm going to type in gutter cleaning Southampton and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, and I'm going to bring it over to here. Uh, let's just get this activated. Right, okay, so... Let's just share the screen. Here we go. Right, so we're now sharing the screen. And we have Gutter Cleaning Southampton. Um, we can see that there's about, there's a lot of people searching for it, number one. Look, you can see the numbers there. <coughs> right, so I'm going to ignore the sponsored, right? Ignore the sponsored. We don't care about the sponsored. We've obviously got the business profile ones. They are going to come up, right? They're going to be up there. But after that, you get check a trade. Look at that. Look at the visits. Right? Look, let me, can I zoom in on here? Can I zoom in? Is that big enough? Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Domain authority, 58, 1,500. Gutter Pro, 28, uh, only 35, okay? A lot of people are going here to check a trade because it they're going to think, oh, well, okay, it's more trusted. So they go there. Uh, 17, 70, 24, 14. So just because, just because the, the, this keyword, right? Uh, if we go here, gutter cleaning Southampton, here we go, has got 390 hits, okay, coming in or people searching. Just because of that, you are up against competition, uh, you are up against competition. Right, so someone has asked me, how did I get that? Uh, let me show you, let me show you. Hold on. Uh, let me give you a video for how we got those numbers. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, here we go. Uh, right, here we go. Here's how you get the words. So, uh, um, numbers. <laughs> I've just called it numbers. Anyway, look, there's the link. Right, there's the link. Right. Um, so if we now, just because the numbers are high, you're up against big competition. So how are you going to make a dent in that? Number one, your domain authority for a brand new website is probably going to be like zero. So you're going to be way down anyway. Number two, if your domain authority is like zero, why are people likely to click as well? Because it means that the algorithm will push you down. So how are you going to make a dent because they're obviously doing something right. You know, they, you know, um, and, and what you might want to do is this. So you might want to take, say, let's take, uh, let's take this company here, Gutter Pro, right? What you're going to do is you're going to go to the website. You can see here. Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. Can you wait? Let me see if I can. Uh, can you see it now? Their URL is gutterpro.co.uk, gutter cleaning Southampton. Gutter cleaning Southampton. I have already advised a lot of you in my videos when I've done rank math is that you change your homepage or your URL to match your keyword. So if your keyword is shaving King Kong, you change your homepage to be shaving King Kong in your URL unless the domain is shaving King Kong. Does that make sense? Hey, love your life. Um, so you got to do that. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to take that and then uh, what do I normally use? Uh, so let's just say um, keyword uh, URL, keyword URL scraper, keyword URL keyword checker. That's it. So if we go to um, wait, 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 which one do I normally go for? There's a few I go for, but 
Uh, is it this one? Is this... I think it's better to use SEMrush. Anyway, look, I'm coming out of this, right? So if you go and use SEMrush, what you can do is you pop in their URL and it will then show you what are the keywords they've used. So you could mimic it. But the biggest, biggest trick is if your home page is home, right? In the menu, it says home. But the URL for it, the the slug, sorry, not the URL, the slug will be your keyword. Yeah, Google Keyword Planner. In fact, should we go to that one? I think, yeah, Google Keyword Planner. Let's go for that one. Yeah, Keyword Planner, there you go, SEMrush, there it is. There's the link. Right, so let's just go here, accept the cookies. I'll put the screen on in a moment. Um... Dun, 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 dun. Oh no, I've got to create, no, oh, I forgot my account details. I'm not going to use that one now. Sorry, let me just get you a different one. Just bear with me a moment. I'm just going to get the right one here. Uh... Oh, damn it. Which one do I use? Anyway, look, but what you would do is, um, but what you would do is uh, you would go in put your URL in and then uh, actually Charlie's probably on the no that's not no okay right I'm not going to spend any time on that now anyway what you need to do though is look at the keywords for websites um, you need to um, look at what they're ranking for and then mimic it, but then you got to make sure your website contains those keywords as well. Look, you're up against big competition. So are you going to get onto page one? Number one, you never promise that to a client. Number two, it's not just you. So you've said low competition. You haven't got low competition. You've got big competition. So for you to get onto page one, people need to stop visiting those websites they, they, they don't visit them, they go to page five, they find you, they go to you. And until they go to you, you're not going to climb to page one. That's the first thing. Number two, they've got backlinks. They've got domain authority. They've got backlinks going on. They've probably linked to each other and everywhere else. So unless you start linking to them or they link to you, they've got to link to you basically, right? Otherwise your domain authority ain't happening. You can link to them all day long. Won't make a difference to your domain authority. They have to link to you in a post, on the footer, on the page, somewhere. It could even be a comment. Did you know that um, if you were to like go to some websites, you know when you leave a comment and it says name, website, if you have a website and you put it in and they approve it and that comment shows your URL link as well, and they've got high domain authority, it feeds to yours. But that's what you've got to kind of think about. So don't ever think, right? Don't ever think it's going to happen day one. Uh, in Mohammed, um, look, is this for a client or is this for you? Is this for a client? Because you're ex So you're saying your client has a restaurant, he's expecting loads of orders. Now, did you agree to work with him? before he told you what he wants. So, Mohammed, did you agree to work with him before he told you what he wants? Or did he say, this is what I want, and you've agreed to work with him? So, which way round is it? Which way round is it? So, love your life, okay. I, um... I have two views about the niche -ifying, okay? Number one... You can nicheify if you know there is an audience and a market. If there is an audience and a market, nicheify. It can work for you, right? If you know there are lots of solicitors, criminal lawyers, criminal lawyers all up and down the country, they're now wanting websites. There's a market for you and you can get in there and build up referrals, contact base, network. You can do that. You can get your foot in the door. Good. But you can also nicheify to a point that you've over nicheified. So now let me give you an example. 
You're going to build websites for people that have stepped on the moon. You're going to build websites for people that have walked, stepped and walked on the moon. How many of them are there? How many people alive right now are there who don't already have a website who are going to need a website? You've now nicheified to the nth degree and the market size is tiny. It's tiny, right? Okay, so you got to think about um, is the target audience, the market you're going for big enough, um, open to websites? There's no point targeting a market like that don't ever have websites, right? There are some businesses and niches where like um, they, they will never, ever, 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 ever do a website. Ever, ever, right? Ever, you know? So you don't nicheify to them unless you're going to give them something so different that they are going to go, wow, I never wanted a website, but now I will go for a website because you've done something so amazing that it, it makes them want to go for it. So when it comes to niching, don't forget to hit like. We've only got 18 likes. You can do that, but your market has got to be decent enough to be sustainable, for you to build, for you to expand. Um, but yeah, that's basically it, really. Um, but if you over nicheify to a very select audience, if you know that one of those people, it is so select, but one of them is going to pay you a million dollars go for it. You get that one job and you don't care if you get any more. You're like, yeah, I'm happy now. They, you know, they're really high paying. But if they are very niche, okay, look, uh, you know, you could go for like, all right, let's go for something more realistic, right? You might nicheify for someone who has, uh, you might say, right, we're going to build a website uh, for someone who has oh, I can't think of anything that you're going to go for something where there are a good chunk of people. But at the same time, they probably are not going to be buying high budget websites. So you've got to factor in uh, your audience, your market. What are they likely to be earning? OK, let's go for another one. Let's say you decide, OK, I'm going to go for a niche area that I don't think anyone has touched. I'm going to go for a niche area that I don't think anyone has touched yet. Yes, organizations have touched it, but I don't think the individuals have. So I'm going to build a website for people that are homeless. Work it out. I'm going to build a website for people that are homeless. There's lots of them out there. You'll be able to go down and you'll find someone. Easy. But they're not going to pay you. So you can build it. You'll probably have to own the domain and hosting. You know, you might be able to set up a charity donation bit. You might be able to take a cut of that because you're helping them out and helping yourself out. But you're not going to make get paid to build it unless you're sponsored. And again, even then, that ain't happening. So even if there's a big audience, right, it is still, it's not a good audience because they're not going to have the, the income or the wealth to offset and pay you back for what you want. So did that help live your life? That was a very long answer I gave there, but I think it's one that sometimes um, you got to kind of do, you got to kind of break it up a little bit. You know, the whole niche thing with like, um, yes, it's good to niche, but don't just do it. Don't just go, oh yeah, they'll, they'll want a website. Are they going to pay you for it? Are they going to actually see the value in it? Because remember, right, Groups out there that don't go for websites, they're not going to pay a lot for a website unless there's a real major benefit to them. So yeah, like Micah said, that's what you got to do, basically. You got to create lots of blog posts. You got to do guest posts on other websites. You got to do loads of posts. You got to do a, basically, you got to do a blog post every day and you got to be hitting that. Um... And also, when you do blog posts, don't just do basic posts. You've got to do stuff like how to clean the gutter, how to sort out this problem, how to um, do X, Y, Z, how to start your own gutter design business, 
how to employ staff, how to scale, how to grow, how to find clients for gutter designing, how to know you're getting the right gutter designer. So, you know, whether it's for you or your client, uh, William, you've got to think about loads of aspects like that. Exactly what Mike says. You know, and when you research uh, certain websites, if they do blogs, you're going to see what blog posts are getting high hits. So if they do a blog post for how can I clean the gutter myself, right? You will look at their post. You could take it into chat GPT and rewrite it. Obviously, do write it yourself as well and use exactly the same keywords. They're just words, right? You can't get sued for it unless they've got a trademarked word in there, right? You could do that. You could do that. You know, so I would say um, just uh, pick a few or several. I'd say go for about five high-ranking posts. Um, and if their posts have not been updated in one month or a year or two years, do one now. You know, update it. Um, well, not update it, create one. And it might mean that for anyone looking for a newer post, they might go towards yours when they see it. That's quite common how things work as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I probably was a little bit exaggerative there when I said do a post every day. You know, I mean, uh, to get your feet, get your foot in the door, it might help a little bit. But yeah, don't do a million posts. Just... um. You want to get five really, really good ones on out there to help build attraction uh, for people to start finding you and stuff like that. How's your week going? It is Thursday, by the way. It is Thursday. Uh, we're coming up to the end of the week now. I'm just checking. I've got some comments. I've just got to quickly just double check some comment because someone's put a comment to me about something and I'm not sure what they're asking me. So... Um, that is something that I am being a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, I don't want to say difficult, but I'm being a bit hard on now in that before, um, if people sent me emails going, oh, can you look at this problem? I'd be like, yeah, okay. And I would be giving away half an hour or an hour of my time. Uh, all they've done is send me an email. I might know them from the live chat or elsewhere. And then I, I end up looking into it, but there's no payment. There's no nothing. It's off my own back. And sometimes I can't find a good solution, but that's me losing time. And then it affects my other workload. So now if anyone emails me and I can answer it really quick on the live chat or like, yeah, blah, 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 quick one, two minute email, I will do. If it's anything that requires me to study and think about it, that is part of a one to one one to one consultation um, because it's all about valuing your time you know it is and it's like I said yesterday someone left a comment on one of our YouTube videos about how they gave a proposal and they got turned down and the client then said to them I turned you down because your cost was so low and I I want to know I'm working with someone who is an expert in what they do love your life imagine having to uh Two companies wanting very similar web design. A, one is a million dollar company and the other is in the thousand dollars. How do you charge? Okay, so what's the value of your life? So you're saying two companies want exactly the same website. So this is the million pound one and here's the thousand pound one, right? What is the website going to do for them? Is it going to double their income? Is it just going to help them get noticed? Is it just going to give them somewhere to stick their social media and their phone number and email? What is the website going to give them? Right, what's the website going to give them? Million dollars and a thousand dollar website. Company here. What is the website going to do for them? Because that's how you decide on your pricing scenario. That's how you decide on it. So is the website going to generate more business for them? What is the return of investment, the ROI? If you can tell me that, then maybe I can advise you a little bit more. Harry Potter. Yes, if you tell me that a bit more, I can then advise you a little bit more on that. Um, 
after today's live chat, I'm going to have a bit of a break. I'm going to just pack up and not do anything for the rest of the evening. And then tomorrow we crack on. And uh, in terms of the outstanding list of things to do woo, for the super course, I'm basically w one third. This is a bit misleading because one of these rows on here, right? One of these, no, not that row. Which one is it? This row here, right? Which is just one row. That's going to be about 10 pages on its own. So it's misleading. But everything else is just one page. But one of them is 10. But I like to think I'm a quarter then. No, a quarter. If that was 10. No, yeah, close to a third. 30%. I've got 30% done so far, and uh, I'm ahead of schedule. I'm ahead of schedule, which is nice. Some stuff I was going to do tomorrow, I did today. So, nice. That's what I like to do. Hey, John, how are you? Had a client increase order based on customer service and reliability. Sales had dropped when they went... Uh, oh, what's that? Had You had a client increase the order based on customer service and reliability. Sales had dropped when they went elsewhere. Well, what do you mean, John? Do you mean... Do you mean they've, they're working with you more now because they know that you're more, more reliable and how you operate with your customer service? Do you mean that? Is that what you mean? So love your life. Um, I'm still waiting for your answer. Love your life. You know, two companies, million dollar, thousand dollar, what is the website going to do for them, for either of them? What's the benefit? What's the benefit? Because if you don't know the benefit, you can't then justify, because obviously the million dollar company, you're going to increase your price. But what is the basis of that? Because if they said, oh, I just want a one page website. I just want a one page website to show social media icon. Well, you can't charge a lot for that. Um, Linda's question, can the custom close button icon be applied to the drop down nav menu? Oh, no. If I'm honest, Linda, I don't think it can. Um, no, I'm not sure about that. I've never tried that. I don't think you can. Sorry, I yawned then. What does chat GPT say? Have you tried asking chat GPT? Can you apply a custom close button s script to the drop down to the drop down nav menu? What you mean, like? So you hit the drop down, and then you want the close button to be inside the drop down, right? Just got to quickly check a comment before I come back to love your life. Um, I'm, I am also doing a bit of a stamp down on the Web Squadron Facebook group as well. So the Web Squadron Facebook group, OK, has been built on the back of hard work, uh, profiling, branding, lots, lots of stuff. Right. Um, so I am kind of stamping down a bit if people start posting links to other YouTube videos. It sounds very vain, but the reason being is. We don't do it in their group. We don't post our videos in their group. So uh, I don't want our brand and our on our groups to suddenly become machines for other people to exploit. So one person, I removed his posts. He started posting a lot of decent stuff. But rather than talking about it in the post, he just kept putting links back to his, his website and it, it, I, I got the feeling like he was trying to build up his brand on the back of us. And I was like, no, that's, I don't like doing that. Um, yeah, well, the thing is, Henster, right? You got it. I mean, obviously, you got to make sure you've got beta for pro and free. And then you got to make sure that you've activated the features. And you might need to log out and log back in. Um Right, back to Love Your Life. The website is to increase visibility and increase profit. Okay, Love Your Life. So again, the the question that you still haven't answered is, what is the value? So you're saying it's to increase visibility and increase profit by what? Exactly, Dave. You've got it, Dave. You've got it. I mean, in a way, it's kind of doing it from the Web Squadron Facebook group. So I don't want him to, like, use... Because we've got over two and a half thousand members now. 
I don't like it that they're using it to drive to theirs, right? Because I feel like you're doing it on the back of us now. You haven't even got a proper portfolio. You just created your website, whatever, and now you're starting to create stuff, but you're using us to get there. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, there's that big X to close the mobile tablet drop down in my footer. Ah, mm. I think like Mike says is, um, I think what Mike says is a good point, actually. If you've got the HTML code for it, you could drop it as a custom link into your appearance menu. Sorry, appearance menus as a custom link. You drop the HTML in. That could work for you. So love of your life, back to you. Okay, we're staying on you. Increased profits means nothing. <laughs> okay, what is the value? So is the million dollar company want, do they want to turn, do they want to make an extra million pounds, an extra 10 pounds, an extra half a million dollars? What do they want to achieve? What do they want to achieve? And what does this smaller company want to achieve? To just say increase profits is neither here or there. What is the value of that? Because do they just want to achieve a bit or a lot? Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with Michael and John on this in that we've had people, um, in fact, my brother-in-law, I did advise him and help him out a bit. Uh, and then I said to, and I told him, look, if you want a maintenance package, this is what it costs. And he doesn't want a maintenance package. And then he comes back to me and I said to him, look, this is the problem you've got now. You got this, you got that. If you want us to help you out, there's a cost for it. And then there's a maintenance package. And the cost for the maintenance package is now double what I said to you last year. So it's up to you. You know, I'm not going to force you to do it. But I'm not going to keep helping you out. You know, don't send me WhatsApp messages at 10 at night because I'm not going to reply to them, number one. I don't, I, leave, I don't bother. I wait till the morning. And even then, I'm just going to very give you one, two line responses. Because quite basically, if you if you need help, you got to pay for it, okay? Um, um, I'm very hard nosed on that because um, I personally feel that if you, um, if you bought something from someone and now you needed their help, you would pay for it unless it was part of an insurance scheme, which you're already paying part of anyway as part of the insurance, right? So you would do that for them, but then you think you can just keep mailing me. And then out of the goodness of my heart, even though I didn't reply to him, I was like, I wonder what he's done wrong. I wonder what he's done. And I logged in, had a look, went to obviously, you know, where the WordPress tools, uh, what's it called? WordPress tools site one of those options, I mean, it gives you the size 10 point bloody two gigabytes. And when I went over to his media library, big images, big images, not compressed. The JPEG, the images are only about 500 kilobytes, to be honest. But when you have a thousand images, big sizes, not WebPed, I'm sorry, yeah, but you've buggered up your back end and now you've, you're going to have to go through and manually clean it up and you will probably screw something up. But you can't even take a backup. His host provider can't take a backup. Crashes, updraft crashes, uh, all-in-one migration crashed, WP Vivid crashed, 10.2 gig, 10.2 gig. It, it's falling over. So do you're going to have to do what you want now, but you can't. You won't even have a backup to save your life because you haven't got one or you haven't got one for ages. And it's a WooCommerce shop. Like you just sort of think, I told you all of this. I even wrote it in an email for you, but you ignored it. You ignored it. And now you're struggling like da. Sorry, big da da. Uh, love your life. Both companies are looking at long term. Pro yeah, but again, love your life. Yeah. Here's the here's the thing, right? What is the what do they want to make in year one? What do they want to make in year one? You know, so you're saying the percentage is not there, but what do you think? What do you think, though, they want to make? So even though they've not said it, you must have got a feeling, 
right? You must have got a feeling. Oh, Mike, Michael, do you know what? Do you know what, Michael? I looked at that and I thought, forget it. Do you know what, Michael? Do you know something? They're not paying me for maintenance, not paying me a care package. They're not gonna. And I thought, forget it. I've just, I've just told him to manually go through and delete your images and sort your sizes out and do your compression. There comes a point, Michael, where you have to kind of go, I could hold their hand or I could just sit there laughing in the shadows. You know, like... <laughs> No, but I don't, to be honest, it sounds, it sounds really negative and harsh, but um, not my problem. It sounds harsh, doesn't it? It sounds really negative, but I think it's the reality of um, when we all start off as web designers, we're all so loving and caring and we want to help out everyone. And then slowly we start to go, nah, do they deserve my love? No, they don't deserve my love. Um. So what Linda is saying then, she, you know, uh, I talk about how wealthy the company is and you can increase. The only thing I would say, though, is that even though they're wealthy, you're going to have to kind of justify it. So what you got to think of your life is um, what do you think the million dollar company would like? Not what they already make. So let's pretend they make a million dollars a year. Hey, CF Group, thank you so much. What do you think they are going to want to make one year after that website is done? What do you think they want to make? Because this is crucial, right? This is seriously crucial. Because if, if you have a vague idea of what you think they want to make, that will tell you whether they are going to value the website or not. Are they going to website it or not? No way, Linda. 10 gig. Oh, man. Ooh. Now, is this... Do you know what? Photo photography websites... If anyone here is a photographer, sorry. Okay. I'm not trying to be mean here. But you are the worst. <laughs> okay. Even though the image is only that big on the website, and I tell them that, it's just going to be 600... Um, 600 by 600, they still want to load it like that. And I'm going, no, 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 but you don't need that. You only need that. No, 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 I want the quality. No, 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 no one cares about that. They only need that. They can see the quality there. No, 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 I want that. And you sort of go, you don't need that. <laughs> you don't need it. But they don't listen. Um, But yeah, wow, Linda, 10 gig, 900 images. It just, that says to me that they've probably got JPEG. Uh, and they haven't done any WebP compression, and their images are like really big pixel width, pixel height. So, Lind, uh, love your life. I know it feels like we're going over the same thing here, but I really want to help you out here. I really want to get to a point where we have closure. Based on your conversations or emails with them, what do you think is the potential for what they want to earn in that first year after the website goes live? Tell me what you think. Because then, um, yeah. Yeah, and duplicate. Oh, Linda, duplicates. Oh, man. And they don't delete them, do they? They load it. And they go, oh, I'll load it again. Oh, did it load? Oh, I'll do it again. Did I do it yesterday? I forgot. I could check the media library, but I ain't got time. I'll load it again. That's what they do. They just go over and 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 over again. Photography websites can be just the worst, you know. Um, also, um, sometimes the images are so varied that getting the images to fit the brand, like I remember, um, uh, so one person I helped out in the end, I said to him, um, your homepage is very dark. It's, it's basically black, really dark black, right? And you got a bit of gold here and there, right? But it's mainly black. No, hold on. Yeah, black. In some areas, there was a really dark navy, like dark navy, and then there was bits of gold. The images were every color under the sun. And I said to them, 
if your if your branding is dark and gold, which it was, what you do on page two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to hundred, don't care. Do what you want. Do what you want with your images, because now you can say face photography, brand photography, corporate photography, landscape photography. You can go to town, do what you want, right? But on your home page, the images you're going to have near the hero banner, the hero banner and afterwards, right? Get them to be dark and gold. Images that are either dark or there's a bit of gold or yellow in them. Get them to fit the brand. Because I said at the moment, your images are very purple, very green, very red and yellow. I said, it's, I'm, like, I'm like, it's there's too much going on. Psychologically, I'm just seeing a lot of variation. But if you show on your homepage that you have thought about your colour and your branding and everything ties together nicely, I'm going to see that and go, ah, very clever. I can see what he's done here. Because you know that when you go to websites and their brand is orange and white and grey, and their images are kind of grayscaly with a bit of orange here and there, don't you stop and go, very clever. Don't you sit there nodding, mm, I like that. Do you ever do that? I do. If I go to anyone's website, I often go, yeah, have they thought about their images? Have they made it work? And when I, when I see that someone has put in effort, whether they did it, a designer did it, Bob Hope did it, whoever did it, I respect them a little bit more. And then I assess the keywords and what they're doing and I'm like, uh, you know. But when, when people have done that little bit of extra thought, I, I can't help but respect them more. Do, do you do that? Do you think like that? Um... So love your life. With a big company, the website can add an estimated 30 to 50% profit. And the smaller company, obviously, right. Okay, so let me now give you a couple of values. Yeah, but to be honest, though, uh, by the way, but I'm just agreeing with Linda and Micah. Look, every time she wants a bit more, right, Linda, you just got to charge more. And that's just the way it is. You just... She wants more, you charge more. That's the way it is. Right, love your life. Okay, let's pretend love your life, right? You've got a company that is, say, their profit is $10,000 and they think they're going to increase to $15,000. Potentially, the build cost for that website, I think, is going to be maybe $500 to $1,000. 500 to $1,000, maybe, right? Something like that. The big company that are a million dollar company, if they think they can get the lowest, which is 30%, so forget the 50, let's go with 30%, which equates to $300,000, and they firmly believe and think that this could happen, then you could charge 5%. So 10% of $300,000 is $30,000. 5% is $15,000. I would advise you to go in with a quote of $14,000, which you might sit there right now and go, what? Yeah, seriously, I'm telling you, because there will be other companies going in at that range and higher. There will be companies going in at twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000. And if you go in to the big company, yeah, we'll do your website for $1,000, they ain't gonna. They ain't gonna take you seriously. They are not gonna take you seriously. Uh, is the big company asking other people? Because if they are, they're gonna be getting hit with proposals for twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars. So you might need to go in at twenty, maybe. I don't know. Justify what you know. What, you know why you're the right person for them. But if this is a million-dollar company that has a minimum are wanting to achieve a £300,000 uplift in profit, 10% of that, drop down to 5% maybe, or in between 10 and 5%, $20,000. And I know it sounds ridiculously high, but million-dollar companies don't want to play with small budgets. Believe me, 
When you look at how much they spend on food, furniture, branding, their offices, they don't go for cheap. They want to show off that we, we're the best of the best. When you're, when you're hitting a million dollar turnover, whatever, your expectation goes up, what you want goes up. Um, Raptor, I saw a local massive company struggle to get a website or ended up with a real cheap. Ah, oh, it looks so crap. And yeah, but you know what? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like they probably had the wrong person. They're working on it. And I have seen that as well as well. I have seen people who had a big budget, but they went for the cheapest and they totally effing regret it. Like I remember um, a tennis coach, he never used us in the end. To be honest, I'm glad he didn't. I got fed up of him. He's a tennis coach in London near Wimbledon, makes a lot of money, got loads of people that use him, wanted a better website. I gave him a price. He went to someone who was half the price. He paid him money. He got absolute crap back, comes running back to me, wants me to lower my price because he's already paid someone. And I was like, that's not my problem. Here's my price. In fact, you've come back to us six months later. The price has now gone up, you know, and I wasn't bothered if he used us or not, but that's just the way it is. Exactly what Linda says there. Don't sit there banking on them taking it. If you get it, wicked. Can you deliver? Wicked, wicked. You deliver and you do it. If you don't get it, so what? Don't sit there going, ooh, 20,000, 20,000. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You get it, you get it. Brilliant. Right? But million dollar company, have you found them or have they found you? Love your life. Did you go to them or did they come to you? And how many other people do you think they might be speaking to? So love your life. Answer those questions. Did you find them and how? How did you find them? Or did they find you? How? Word of mouth? Uh, advert? LinkedIn? What was it? And how many other web designers do you think they're speaking to? Tell us that. Did you find them and how? Did they find you and how? And how many web designers do you think they're speaking to? <laughs> I mean, I, I, um, if I think a job is too difficult or too big for me to do, I will, I will just quote a ridiculously stupid price because I'm, my heart's not really set on it. If I think I can do it, or I might have to hire extra help to do it, I set a really high budget. And if we get it, great. If we don't get it, don't care. And, and when you form that mindset where you don't care, when you get rejected, it's easy. It's very easy to not be bothered, right? It's a bit like, it's a bit like football, right? It's, in fact, football is a difficult one. When your team lose, you'll feel bad, don't you? Even though it doesn't really affect you. Technically, if a football team loses, it doesn't affect you completely unless you're associated with the business or a service. But with web design, you don't attach yourself to it. And if you lose out, you lose out. Uh, round hexagon, you can't actually post links here. And um, if you were to email me, the email is below my email. If you email me, we'll quickly look at your hero banner. I won't look at more than your hero banner, mainly because um, um, I might do. Depends on how, how hooked I am. I might go beyond the hero banner, but you've got to send a link for me to have a look. Yeah, to be honest, Mike, and that's sometimes how the best way to play it. You are right. So 7.5% of roughly what the value is to them. Um, exactly, Michael. Do you know something? Do you know something? Uh, and here's how I learned the lesson. I remember someone asked me about potentially a website to do with, uh, it was a restaurant with potential table ordering and stuff. And I was like, crap, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? So I asked someone and they quoted £40,000. And I did say to them, is that, will you be doing it all or will you be outsourcing and then managing but make sure it's delivered? And I went, yeah, we'll be outsourcing. 
And that's when I started to cotton on to that fact, yeah, okay, I get it now. But that's the thing, right? If, if it's a really complex job and you're a bit unsure, boost up that, boost up that price, boost it up, right? Um, and then you outsource and find someone and you will find someone, you know, you will find someone, you'll have contacts, you might know people, you can ask around. Hey, Eddie, how are you doing? So you love your life. You you were recommended to them by a client and they reached out. From our first meeting, they made mention of having spoken to two other dine designers, but they weren't convinced. OK, so love your life. What you now need to do is think about the client that referred them. How much did you charge them? So that's your baseline now. Right. So they probably told the other company, oh, we paid X amount, maybe. So that's your baseline then what you need to do is now go, how can you build on top of that? Because is this company a bigger company than the one that referred? So you must have done a job for someone. How big were they? What did they, what did they pay? How big is the other company? So pro rata the price, a pro proportion, right? And work it out. It's basic mathematics. Basic mathematics, right? Mathematics. To be honest though, Linda, right, yeah. Uh, to be honest though, Linda, if you were going to, um, uh, when I said 40K, you wouldn't be giving all of that away to the outsource, right? You wouldn't give that all away, okay? Um, and they wouldn't either. But what they're going to do is they'll take a huge cut for themselves. It's a bit like when you have project managers for building. So you have an extension built. I and mean, then you got someone project managing it. And say the cost of the extension was $50,000. About 10,000 of that is going to the project manager who doesn't even lift a brick. Of that 50,000, about 10,000 goes to them. And all they do is just walk around and check things are okay. Oh, are you here now? Right, you need to make sure you work on that. Check that's all okay as well. They're not going to lift a brick. And in some way... That's how it kind of works, even with outsourcing. Don't, it's a bit like some web design agencies, though. I don't like it when some agencies do this. And if you do this, great for you, but I don't, I don't, I don't like this. They charge a client $1,000 for a website. They then hire someone to build the website. And the person building the website, they pay them like $100 or something minor. So $900 goes into the back pocket of the agency guy who hasn't even built the website. All they're going to do is get the spec and then keep an eye on who's doing it, make sure it's done, and then feedback and hand over to the client. The entire website is built by someone for $100, right? And that's kind of the whole outsourcing kind of way of working for some people. Um, uh, what's your, what was your email? What was your email name uh, round hexagon? I mean, round it, rounded hexagon sounds a bit weird, but I get what you're doing. Uh, Raptor X says Burton based, Burton based store. No, I don't really know them. Um, Right, okay. Right, your website's not come through. I mean, I don't... I can't see it anywhere right at the moment. So uh, I'm just checking. Um, I'm just going to check my spam. My spam? I'm just going to check my spam. Hold on. Junk mail. No. No, 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 no. Nothing's come through. No, nothing's... Your email is not in spam. I'm telling you now, it's not in spam. Your email is not in spam. So um, info at websquadron.co.uk. I'm going to give you one more chance. No, go try sending it again and see what, uh, see what, yeah, sent it again. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with outsourcing, but... Uh, It thinks your email address is spam, rounded hexagon, maybe. So that sometimes means that it's coming from you, you see. Because um, I've been getting emails all day long. Uh, what is your email address? Don't, don't, 
type it without the at sign. But what is what is your email domain provider? What is your email domain provider? Um, I mean, what you could do, though, is you could actually type your URL in here if you want. So if you want to type your URL in, type it, but leave out the HTTPS bit. And when it says dot, can you put the word dot in capitals? So type your URL in here without the HTTPS, okay? Um, and where it's a dot, can you put the word dot, like the actual word dot, D-O-T in capitals, okay? Do that, put it there, and we'll get it on the screen now. We'll get it on the screen, so go. Go for it. Yep, go, 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 go. Uh, right, come on. Come on, rounded hexagon, where are you? I'm waiting for you, man. Oh, yeah, so tonight I'm going to try and have as a chill-out evening as much as I can. Just rest, watch a bit of TV, catch up on stuff. Sorry for yawning. Um, even though today's been a good day, it feels like a very long week, um, jumping around between jobs and doing stuff. But it has it has felt like a long week. Um, so I want to try and relax as much as I can this evening. Uh, and then tomorrow, continue with the super calls tomorrow and uh, potentially another client call, maybe just to touch base with them about something so that we know where we stand and sit when it comes to working on their website. Uh, yeah, uh, I've not got it rounded hexagon. Nothing's come through, mate. I'm really sorry. But what you need to do is you need to type like this. Look, so you need to do something like this. Right? You need to do something like this. So look at what I've just gone and typed, right? You need to type like that. So you need to miss out the HTTPS. Put the, put the dot as the word dot like that. So if you put that into the chat, it will show. If you're just pasting it, it won't work. So that's what you got to do, yeah? You do that, and we might be able to see it. We might be able to see it. I've just checked my messages that are coming through. So look, my email's working fine. Stuff is coming in. Uh, in fact, I've got some messages come through as well. What is this? What is this? What is this? So type it in, and we'll get back to you. Yep, yeah, type it in, type it in, type it in, type it in. And then we'll have a quick look at your website, but it will be done very, very quickly. Okay. So do that, rounded hexagon. Has anyone had a bad week, though? Has anyone had a bad week? Uh, love your life. I don't know if you're still there yet, but has this kind of uh, made you think a little bit about your pricing? I mean, out of curiosity, do you want to share what you were thinking of going in with? You know, no one's here to judge, but what were you thinking of charging? So before you, you spoke to us and all of that, yeah, but rounded hexagon, you need to put it in the chat. There's no point doing it via there because it's obviously not coming. It's not being, it's not receiving. It's not hitting me. So you got to put it in here. Yeah. So uh, you got to put it in the chat, the chat. Because you're chatting now. Put it there. Right. Um, um, but with that, but, you know, but make it not be an email. But not be an email. Okay, type it step by step now then. Go on round and hex and type it step by step. Put the first bit of your website into the chat without the HTTPS, without the colon, without the backslash, without the www dot, right? Leave all of that out. Type the first bit of your website in. Type the first bit. Literally, type the first bit in. Like, look, this is the first bit for Google, right? Um... No, we don't outsource the email service raptor. Go on, type the first bit of that. It's a bit like um, the first bit for elemental.com would be elemental. 
the first bit for bricks builder would be um, bricks builder and then I would say uh, dot and then I would put IO so look that's what I've done bricks builder dot IO right so type it no I don't need to know about the slash I don't need to know about what slash share slash all right share slash yeah I'm not sure what you're doing there around in the hexagon because you've put slash why would you have a slash at the start that's not that's not that doesn't sound like a domain to me you got slash share slash I'm I'm not sure about what you're sharing there really not so like I've just said to you bricksbuilder.io Yeah, like dot dot dot, like um, you know, like it's, it's like if I do this, element. It's like if I start to type in here, uh, elementor. Oh, I've typed it wrong. Dot com. Look, elementor dot com. Like slash there slash. It sounds like a murder website. Slash share slash. So yeah, rounded hexagon. I we I need the URL um, in you know the right way. I'm telling you now, rounded hexagon. Right, you've got everyone on the live chat right now on tenterhooks waiting to see this website and what the URL is. Like literally, we are like like. There are some people that want to go have a shower. They want to have a poo. They want to have a wee. They want to eat. Hey, Pixstar, how are you? You are right, mate? There's people that want to run off, but they're all waiting now for your goddamn URL. Come on. Everyone, I want you to all send positive thoughts. Positive thoughts, okay, to Rounded Hexagon. Where's the URL? <laughs> Come on, rounded hexagon. Don't tell me it's that difficult to break it down. Come on. We're just waiting on someone to send a URL in. Um, um, just so we can look at this. Um, we don't even know what we're looking at, to be honest, do we, Mike? Like, it might just be a black page, you know. Um, and the whole website's called Darkness. I don't know. We don't know what we've been looking at. Right. Um, you know, and again, no emails come through. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about what's going on with the email bit there then. Um, I've got emails coming in, so I know my emails are working fine. Okay, I think rounded hexagon is gone. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, anyway, maybe he wasn't real. Who knows? Maybe he wasn't real. Who knows? Okay, I am now going to give the two-minute warning. Pixar has joined, and now I give the two-minute warning, uh, mainly because we've been live for one hour 22. Please don't forget to hit like if you've not hit like already. Um, love your life. If you're still there, please do let us know about what value did you have in mind for that million-dollar company's website. Uh, is what I'm telling you to do, like, way over... Or is what we're trying to do around the ballpark? It's okay to say the value I'm telling you to go for is nowhere near what you thought. But it'd be good to kind of get into your head, you know. I know, Linda, I think he has. I think it may be right. Yeah, he fell off his chair. And um, he fell off his chair and he was actually trying to do SOS, like Morse code, like Slash. <laughs> share slash share share no I don't get it. slash share slash I don't get it I really don't get it I know Pixstar I'm, I'm to be honest Pixstar I'm a bit hungry I'm feeling a bit peckish and my son's been home now for uh do 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 he's been home for about one hour twenty and I haven't even seen him yet since he got home so I just got to obviously go and chat to him and check he's all right. Problem exists between chair and keyboard. 
Yes, I think you're right, Michael. I think that might be the problem with him. Yeah, love your life. That's fine. Yeah, but did you have a rough figure in your mind that you were going to go with? Think about it, right? You know, remember, love your life, right? Ignore everything I say. Think of the client. What did you charge them? They've spoken to us someone else. So now you have a baseline. Is what you're going to do bigger and better than what you're going to do there? But the value of the return, how big was this company? How big are they? So you got to factor it in. The return of investment. Hey, Matty Check, you made a fun website on Monday. The vegan eggs. Mm. I'm not sure that's quite fun at all. I don't know if that's quite fun at all. Vegan eggs. Hmm. No, my wife picked him up today, uh, Eddie. My wife picked him up uh, mainly because um, I just had a lot on and I said to her a lot on the way back from work, could you pick him up instead? Because she technically she could pick him up every day, but I like to go out and pick him up. But it was snowing, it was raining and I thought, oh, I'm working as well and it's raining and blah, blah. And, you know, I'm just not in the mood, right? Can you go and pick him up? So she was fine with that. Well, she would be. It's her son as well. But, you know, she was fine with it. OK, everyone, I'm now going to jump off. I know I think we've lost rounded hexagon. I bet all of his emails flood through tonight. And if they do, I will share and talk about it tomorrow. OK, everyone, I'm now going to say goodbye. Uh, take care. I'm going to try and enjoy my evening, sort out a few things in the home, but enjoy my evening as much as I can. And then tomorrow we'll be back normal time and we'll see how it goes. Oh, sorry. Love your life. The earlier client was charged 5K. The new one is way bigger yeah, there you go. There you go. Love your life. You've answered your question. 15 to 20,000. That's what you do. That is what you do, right? 15 to 20,000. That's what you do. I mean, Matty check. Vegan eggs. <laughs> I bet the graphics were mad. <laughs> all right, mate. Look, take care, everyone. Catch you all later. Speak soon. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Hey, bye Simon as well. Bye Simon, great to see you there.